Hey, welcome English people. Uh, we have to decided to make uh, yeah some English lore. So normally we do it in German. So now we do it also in English. Um, first, um, sorry for my English. It is not so not very good. So sorry for some words spoken or some special things or grammatically things um i am not the best sorry <laughs> so um welcome to the world of warcraft law again my name is lassi or crazy and we beginning the law about artas artas said uh, one day i would let be any cause to save my homeland artas menethil crown prince of lordoran a knight of the silver hand was the son of King Terranus Minetir the second and heir to the throne. He was trained as a paladin by Uta the Lightbringer, and uh, he had also a romantic la relationship with the kind sorceress Jaina Proudmower. Despite his promising beginnings, Arthas became one of the most powerful and evil beings. Azeroth would ever know. Taking up the cause vulnerable frost morn, he became a death knight, led the search in destroying Lordoran and merged with the Lich King. Lich King. I don't know uh, how it's spoken right, Lich King or Lich King, sorry. <laughs> Ruling as a dominant personality of the Lich King for years afterwards, Arthas was defeated in combat by adventures of the Alliance and the Horde. Credited by the spirit of his father, King Terranus, Arthas Minetil died, leaving the mantle of the Lich King to be taken by a noble soul who would contain the power of the sword. Um, so we have now uh, the voices of Arthas and uh, Arthas was uh, first voiced by Justin Gross in Warcraft Third or the Third Period, Reign of Chaos, and the Frozen Soul. Then the second was Patrick Sates in World of Warcraft, Wrath of the Lich King. And uh, as the Lich, Lich King, I don't know how it's uh, why it's uh, uh, here uh, two of uh, voices, but. I don't know, he was voiced by Michael McConnell. Hi, I, ho I hope it's right, Connor. Hi, Connor B. Uh, <laughs> it's more. I don't know. Um, Prince Arthas Menethil was born to King Terranus Menethil II four years before the start of the First War. The young prince grew up in a time when the lands of Azeroth were ravaged by war. The alliance was crumbling and darker clouds loomed off the horizon. As a young child, as he was younger, he became friends with Varian Rin. As a youth, Arthas was trained in combat by Meridine Bronzebart, the brother of the Dwarven King, Magni Bronzebart, and became an adept swordsman. Under the tutelage or tutelage, tutelage tutelage of Uta the Light Lightbringer, Arthas was inducted into the Knights of the Silver Hand at the age of uh, 19. The ceremony was held in the Cathedral of Light in Stormwind City and it was then that Arthas was given the holy mace called Light's Vengeance. Despite his rash and headstrong behavior, Arthas became a re renowned Renowned warrior. One of his more famed exploit was counterattacking a group of forest trolls striking at Keltalas from Sulaman. And it was during the time that Arthas met the youngest daughter of Dalin Proudmoor, the sorceress, Jaina. Over the years, they grow close as friends and then they go together. <laughs> Romantically. They're, they were very much in love with one, no one another, but
but eventually others <laughs> would question whether the two of them were ready to be together. Others would abrup abruptly end the relationship so Jaina could focus on her magical studies in Dalaran and Arthas could focus on, it, on his commitments to Laurel. Shortly after, they would agree to rekindle their romance, but this was during the beginning of the source search invasion that would change both of their lives forever. Pre-corruption Night of the Silver Hand The Plague of Undeath Troubles began to stir in Lordaeron. Orcs broke free of their internal camps and there was distressing news of a plague that had gripped the Northlands. Arthas and Uta were sent to Stranbard to defend the town from Orcish raids. The young prince defeated the black drake Serenox to retrieve its heart for the dwarf Ferenor Steer II to forge into an orb of fire. Arthas used his magical item to kill the Black Rock clan's blademaster leading the raids. However, a more vile threat arose in the form of the plague of Undeath. Jaina and Captain Farrick were sent to join Arthas, now 23 years old, in order to investigate the strange plague. They fought an undead army at the plague infested granary. They encountered the necromancer Keltuzad in the town of Brill and pursued him to Andohal. Keltuzad had already infected the stored grain in Andohal and shipped it out to outlying villages. Before Atas killed him, Ketuzat spoke of Marganus, a nat natrizim demon who led the search. Jaina and Atas traveled north to confront him in Stratholm. Along the way, Atas and Jaina stopped at Hearthclan village where they hoped to rest. Instead, they were warned of an approaching army of undead. Atas ordered Jaina to find Uta and seek his aid while he remained behind to defend the town. To his horror, Arthas discovered that the plague was not merely a means of mass murder, but rather the means of turning innocent town folks into undead creatures. creatures. Arthas forces Barry held out were on the verge of defeat when A Uta arrived with reinforcements and saved the village. While traveling to Stratholme, Arthas was met by the enigmatic prophet Medivh. He gave him the same advice he gave Terranas to travel west to Kalimdor. Arthas argued that his place was with his people and vowed that he would not abandon them. Jaina suggested that the prophet might be right, but Arthas paid her no heed and continued to Stratholm. Calling of Stratholm. When he arrived, Arthas found that the grain had already been distributed and he knew that the villagers would soon become undead zombies. He ordered Uta and his knights to purge the entire city. Horrified, Uta rebuked him by saying that he would now follow such an order even if Arthas were al already king. Proclaiming that Uta had committed treason, Arthas disbanded the Knights of the Silver Hand. Several of, the so of his soldiers left with, with Uta, as did Jaina. Why those that remained loyal to Arthas joined him in slaughtering the corrupted townsfolk? As Arthas began to slay the citizens of Stratholm, he was met by Marganus himself, who has worked a uh, working to claim the souls of, t of the Torn folk. Arthas worked to destroy them before Marganus could reach them. Finally, Arthas demanded a final showdown with the Dread Lord. Marganus slipped away, however, going to meet him in Northrend. Arthas then set fire to Stratholm. Something snapped in Arthas that day. His inability to stop the plague sent him down 
the cold lonely road he would soon follow. The fire burn to, the, to this day. Northrend. Arthas claims Frostmorn. Arthas followed Malganus with the detached of his, of his troops. They arrived a month later in Dagger Cap Bay. As they searched for a proper place to set him set up camp. Arthas' men came under gunfire before being recognized by the Dwarven Explorer's Guide. Arthas was, sh was shocked to have come upon his good friend and former mentor Muradin Bronzebart. At first Muradin thought that Arthas was leading a rescue party sent to save his men who had been besieged by the undead and as they uh, searched for the vulnerable Frostmorn. Arthas admitted it was a uh, mere con coin oh, coincidence. Together they destroyed the newly undead camp, but there was still no sign of Myganus. As Muradin and Arthas went to search for Most Frostmorn, an emissary from Rurderon arrived in a Zeppelin and spoke to Captain Luke Follonforth. He bore orders from Uta and Terranus instructing Arthas and his men to return home. When Arthas returned to his base, the men had abandoned their post and were making their way through the forest towards their boats. Arthas had no intention of leaving before Marganus was destroyed. With the help of some indigenous mercenaries, He managed to reach and burn his boats before his men got, that, got to them. When his men arrived, Arthas betrayed his mercenaries, accusing them of destroying the ships. And the captain had them killed, much to disgust of Moradin. Arthas told his men that they had no means of going home, and the only way they were leaving Northrend was sought victory. The Runeable Frostmorn. Arthas and his troops continued to press onto Dragtoron's keep in search of Frostmorn. As he arrived, Marganus appeared to him and foretold his death. Arthas went to search for Frostmorn with Muradin, leaving his captain to defend the camp. Using an ancient Vagate Arthas, Muradin and a small group of men traveled to the vicinity of the fabled rune braid. Arthas was soon confronted by the guardian who tried to keep him from Frostmorn, apparently for his own protection. The guardian fell and Arthas Muradin went forward to their praise, praise. Uh, Muradin reading an inscription reported that the blade was caused and pleaded. Oh, leave it be Arthas, forget this business and led your men home. But Arthas was adamant. Arthas asked the spirit of their cavern for the sword to be released from its icy prison. Prison. Sorry. Proclaimed that he would uh, give anything or pay any price if only you will let me save my, my people. When the weapon broke free, Muradin was struck by a roach shard of ice. Arthas moved to have Muradin to help Muradin, but was destituted aided by the call of Ma Frostmon in his mind. Arthas discarded his uh, holy Ma Warhammer, lights Vengeance, then picked Frostmon up and returned to his base, leaving Muradin for dead. With Frostmon in hand, Atas defeated Marganus' minions and finally confronted the demon. Marganus told him that the voice he was now hearing was that of the Lich King. However, Atas replied that voice was instructing him to destroy Marganus, much to the Dreadlord's surprise. Slaying the Dreadlord, Atas fled into the frozen north leaving his troops to fend for themselves. Arthas soon lost the last remnants of sanity. Corruption, champion of the Lich King, Betrayal. Prince Arthas returns home. 
Arthur's moments before killing his father. Arthur's traveled back to Lorien months later for his just reward. The kingdom rejoined, re rejoiced at the return of its prince and hero. Arthur knelt before the throne, then approached his father King Terranus and ran him through his first morn, killing him and leaving Lorien to rot without a king. The king's bloodied, broken crown remains lost to, to this day. Arthas fled the scene and traveled to the Balnir farmstead. There he used the, his necromantic powers to raise his faithful steed in Winkelbill into Andes, allowing it to serve at his mount's mount once again. Weeks later, Arthas reappeared re in Vandemore village at the bidding of his new master, the Lich King. There he met Tichondrius the Darkener, a, a dreadlord like Myganus, thinking that the dreadlord was Myganus out for revel revenge. Arthas immediately threatened him only to discover that his dreadlord had come to congratulate, uh, congratulate, sorry, Arthas for his if efforts. When spoken to, Arthas said, um, He no, no longer felt remorse for any of his actions. Tishonrius explained that, that the sword was designed to steal souls and that Arthas own soul was the first one it had claimed. Arthas assembled the members of the wild cult of the Dormed that were hiding in Vondemore and he was aided by their magical abilities as he traveled to Andohol where he was to recover Ketuzat's corpse. Arthas killed the paladin guard guarding the crypt, Gavin read the dire and recovered the remains of the necromancer. This brought Ketuzat's ghost into being and secretly introduced Arthas not to trust the dreadlords. Arthas quietly contemplated this. <coughs> Ketuzat's remains were badly decomposed and needed to be taken to the mystical sunwell and Ketalas to be revived. Revived. Tichonrius sent Arthas to recover a mystical urn, which could be used to transport Ketuzat's remains. However, the urn was in the keeping of the Knights of the Silver Hand. Arthas killed two paladins, Balauta the Bright, who survived, and Sage Truthbeer, who both condemned Arthas' betrayal. He then faced Uta the Lightbringer, who, co who explained that the urn held the ashes of his father, King Terranus. Arthas murdered his lifelong mentor and saved the urn, saved the urn. Abandoning his father's remains, he replaced them with those of Keltuzad, then began the long journey to Keltalas. Fall of Keltalas. Arthas met heavy resistance from the elves, rallied by Dra Ranger General Sylvanas Windrunner, driving their forces before his undead army, he steadily pushed her people back in a swath of destruction towards Silvermoon. Sylvanas tried to warn the vast elven capital of the coming of the Sorge, but Arthas destroyed her camps and killed the Ranger General. To make her pay for her perceived insolence towards him, Arthas corrupted her elven spirit, transforming into a horrendous, twisted form, a banshee, and enslaving her to the will of the Lich King, forcing her to slay her own people. Arthas, along with the matching armies of the Sorge, annihilated Silvermoon. Leaving it in ruins, on the road to Sunwell he faced an Asterian Sunstrider, the aged High King of Kaltalas, and killed him with minimal struggle. Arthas then used the Sunwell to bring Keltuzat back to life, reborn as an undead Lich. Destruct destruction of La Dalaran As the pair traveled to Alterac, killed Keltuzat, sorry, explains the full extent of the second invasion. 
and the plans of the Lich King and the Sorge. Ketuzad was an Alterac to destroy a camp of Blackrock Black clan orcs who had taken control of the Daemon Gate which the Lich King would use to speak to the Demon Lord Archimonde. The Sorge destroyed the orcs and after Keltuzad received order from Archimonde they set out for the powerful seat of the world's mages, the city of Dalaran. Archimonde instructed them to acquire the spellbook of Medivh, which would allow Keltuzad to summon Archimonde into Azeroth. Despite the Kirin's tour, valiant efforts to repel the invasion, the Sorge fought through their magical defenses and fortifications killed the Archmage Antonidas and claimed the Book of Medivh. Arthas and his troops repelled the mages, thus counter-attack as Kertuzat began the lengthy summoning of the Demon Lord. Once Archimonde arrived, he proclaiming that the Lich King was of no further use to the legend and Tishonrius was placed in command of the Sorge. Arthas was left to wonder what would become of him and care to that, but the Lich King replied that all was going as the Lich King foresaw. The pair disappeared as Archimonde took his revenge to on the city, destroying Dalaran with a single powerful ritual. Arthas was, was next seen several months later in Kalimdor, where Tishanrius was employing the arcane power of the school of Gul'dan, Gul'dan Arthas told the recently freed demon hunter Illidan how to claim the skull's power as his own, whereupon he could destroy the Shondrius. Illidan agreed to his plan and Arthas disappeared again. Return to Lodoran. <coughs> Arthas confronts the dead dreadlords. Archimonde left a trio of dreadlords behind in the ruin placed uh, palace, sorry, Garden of Lorien, to ensure that the nation remained under control and to watch over the cunning servi servitors of Nerzul. When the demon lord was defeated, however, they were not ordinarily aware of it, of it. This changed several months later when Arthas returned to claim his throne. He threatened at the dreadlords, who immediately fled, and then called Sylvanas and Ketuzat to his side. Together they crushed the remaining human refugees in the area who were led by the paladins Dagran the Orc Slayer, Halek the Lifebringer, and Margaret the Defender. However, during the climax of the battle, Arthas had a painful seizure and felt the Lich King calling out to him. Despite his diminished powers, Arthas fought on until as the remaining humans were killed. Little did Arthas know that the Lich King's power had dwindled to the point that Sylvanas was no longer under his control. In secret, she attended a meeting with the three dreadlords who told her that the Lich King's power was warning and so the time had come to claim her vengeance. Arthas was ambushed in the capital city and was forced to collect what loyalists he could find and fight his way through the dreadlords forces which included the fo powerful abomination blood feast. As he arrived on the city's limits, he was saved by a kettle of banshees who told him that uh, Sylvanas had sent them to see him safely away. However, as they neared an empty spot in the forest, Arthas received another vision from, Lich from the Lich King, who told him he'd been betrayed. Sylvanas then appeared and shot him with a paralyzing arrow. Ketuzat stepped in and chased her off at the last moment. But the Lich King mental cries pierced Arthas' mind and he was told to return to Northrend for demonic forces 
later revealed to, the, to be Illidion in the Naga. Where walking to destroy the frozen throne and end the self-proclaimed king's reign. Immediately Arthas prepared his fleet and, sail and set sail for Northrend, leaving Kertuzad behind to watch over Lordaeron. Escape to Northrend. Arthas holding Frostmorn, Arthas activates obelisks. Three weeks later, Arthas landed upon the uh, familiar coast of Northrend and unexpectedly found himself being attacked by blood elves led by Kethas. Hungry for vengeance at their kingdom's destruction, Arthas was unexpectedly saved by a large crypt lord who introduced himself as Anubarak, the former king of Azionurub. Kethas warned that through the preliminary, oh God, this will preliminary scouting force may have fallen, their main army would not <laughs> be so <laughs> easily defeated before teleporting away to safety. Sorry, I have spoken German. Uh, Arthas worries <laughs> that he may be, be right and that he would never reach Ice Crown Citadel before Illidan, but Anubarak thought differently. Thought differently. He the su su uh, suggested that they delve into the such God is well. <laughs> so <laughs> the shattered kingdom of Azionarub using the underground passageways to beat Illidan to the glacier. Seeing little other choice, Atas agreed. Anubarat suggested raiding the horde of Saphiron, an Asian blue dragon and servant of Maligos, and equipped themselves with the dragon's treasures. Not only did they slay the dragon, but Atas used the power he had left to raise Saphiron into a powerful frost room. Okay, so I now make a little break and uh, you will hear the next p um, episode in the next video in part 2. Thank you.